Um, hello everyone. Uh, this panel uh, will be led by Erika Hagen and um, they will talk about sustainability of OSM mapping projects. Thanks. Is it? Okay. So I'm not going to say too much to begin with, but uh, just a brief introduction. And as you can see, we have five panelists, so we want to make time to hear from everybody and also discuss, so uh, we will all be brief. Um, so I started looking at the topic of sustainability, as we're calling it, within OpenStreetMap uh, mapping projects as part of uh, something called Open Cities. So the World Bank's, um, one of the World Bank's organi uh, internal organizations on resilience has a project called the Open Cities, and it has to do with OpenStreetMap in different countries around the world for projects that are happening in those countries, usually funded by the World Bank as well. Um, and they're, they've just launched one series in several African cities. Um, and so I am doing a bit of research around how mapping groups in different countries uh, have sustained themselves or not sustained themselves and what challenges have come up so that hopefully we can learn from everybody's experience. So in case uh, I should also introduce myself, I'm Erica Hagen and I, in 2009 I started a project with my partner um, called Map Kibera. So we started working in Kibera slum area of Nairobi and it's been several years now and I'm still working there. We formed an organization there locally. Um, I work on a daily basis with mappers using OpenStreetMap um, that come from that initial project and is now an organization doing different kinds of work, mostly in Kenya. Um, and I've thought a lot of the, about this topic of, you know, if you go in and train people to do ma mapping, what happens next? How are they benefiting? How are they continuing to be engaged? Um, so that's why this, this topic was very close to me. And I wanted to also see how everybody else has addressed it or not addressed it and the challenges that they've faced. So that's what everyone's going to talk about, primarily focusing on the biggest challenge that they've had doing their work in different countries. Um, and it was hard for me to pick. Then I gave them that assignment, and it was really hard for me to pick what our biggest challenge has been as Map Kibera. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with maintaining participation over a long period of time. We've now been active for almost, like, for nine years. And there's a few people who have stayed with it from the beginning who are very devoted, who are actually staff now. But in terms of the bigger OSM community in Kenya, I think that we've kind of failed in that regard. And that's kind of what I'm taking away from State of the Map also, that we could grow it much bigger as a whole Kenya community. Um, so that's my piece. So I put on the screen knowledge equity, this concept, because I thought it kind of underlies a lot of our work working in Kenya and a lot of people's work in developing country contexts, so like non-European, non-American contexts. Um, but also it ties in with this kind of diversity idea that's been coming up here regarding gender. I stole this from Wikimedia, so I, this is actually one of their main strategy points, and some of you from Italy here are working on, are from Wikimedia, so uh, the most important line to me is the last line, we'll break down social, political, and technical barriers that prevent people from accessing and contributing to free knowledge. So if you replace knowledge with map, it's something that I would, I think is important in OpenStreetMap. And I know it's not necessarily the strategy, strategic goal of OpenStreetMap right now, but the fact that it's a free and open map and that supposedly anyone can access it and participate in creating the data is really fundamental. So that sort of underlies my, my work with OSM. And I loved seeing it written as an actual goal. So I hope we can discuss this further over the weekend. So I'm like, so at, so far in the research part that I was talking about around sustainability, 
I just wanted to present just a tiny bit of what we've come up with so far in terms of breaking down this topic. Like, what does it actually mean for OpenStreetMap to have a sustainable mapping uh, community in countries or sustainable mapping organization? Does it mean sustainable data of, because map data gets old really fast when changes are happening and you need to keep that sustainable so the maps are actually accurate. In terms of the, so we thought of it in sort of levels. There's like, how does the individual mapper engage with OpenStreetMap? Can they keep doing it? Just the basic of like, can they keep doing it over time? What do they need in order to keep engaged? Um, besides just a willingness, you know, what else might they need? Um, local organizations, that's the main one that I've focused on with the Map Kibera project. Um, how can that be sustainable? What, how can we access resources that are needed? Local ecosystems, like the Kenya ecosystem, you know, if, if OpenStreetMap, or if Map Kibera went away, would there still be people doing OpenStreetMap? Like, how vibrant is the ecosystem in each country? Um, then there's governmental, looking at it from that level. Is the government using OpenStreetMap? Is the local government using it? Is the national government using it? Are they just even aware at all that it exists? In many cases, no. Um, so that's not very sustainable in terms of keeping the map active. Institutional, just looking a step larger, maybe it's international NGOs using OpenStreetMap or something to that effect. And global is what we're doing here, looking at the whole global OpenStreetMap and how can it be, how can we keep engaging people and keep mapping. Um, and in, so in the different countries where all of us on this panel are working, there's a lot of ways people have tried to be sustainable by forming a local NGO. That's often a, something that people immediately try to do somehow, um, or a company, a business. Um, maybe they try to affiliate a chapter with uh, the Youth Mappers program or an open street map chapter. Um, fiscal sponsorship I haven't seen as much, but it could become part of like an I hub type of, like a lab type of setting or tech hub. Um, maybe they just do individual consulting. They find out that um, you know NGOs are interested in using OpenStreetMap, and they become hired to do it. Maybe they just have there's an original founding project, and they just keep working with it. You'll probably hear some examples of that. Um, maybe they're in the government, or um, they join the government in order to work on mapping. And maybe they're just volunteers. So I put that kind of last, and we've been talking about it a little bit over the past day, or I have been. Um, and there's a little bit of, in, in a lot of the countries that we're talking about, it's very hard to just do pure volunteerism, but is it possible? How does, it, how does that form a piece of the puzzle? And these are some things that might be needed or a way to break down what um, each group might have. Like, do they, they need resources. That could be people, that could be equipment, they, that could be funding. They need somebody with the technical skills. They need possibly some kind of organizing principle and they need networks. They need to be joined up with this greater community of OSM. So that's just that's very cursory explanation. <laughs> um, so now I'm going to move on to the panelists. So each person is just going to speak for five minutes. I might have to jump up and down or something. If you ran, if you're going way over, I'll be like, okay. <laughs> so keep an eye on me. Um, and. Basically, I'll let them introduce themselves one by one, and they'll tell you a little bit about what they do and what country and how, you know, how long they've been doing it for. And mainly, I wanted each of them to highlight one of their main challenges that has been hard for them in terms of the sustainability of what they're working on. Um, so we'll just go down the line. So start with uh, Janet. Please introduce yourself as well. Yeah. Hi, um, so I'm Janet Chapman, and for the last five years I've been a full-time volunteer for Tanzania Development Trust, which is an entirely volunteer-run charity that's been in operation for 43 years, supporting grassroots projects in rural Tanzania. Um, so around three years ago, when as I was visiting projects in rural Tanzania, I realized that they weren't on any map, which seemed to me to be a ridiculous problem in the 21st century. So I started uh, crowd to map um, and since then, so crowd to map is an entirely volunteer um, organization. Um, the vast majority of our volunteer, online volunteers have come through um, UN online volunteering. So we have around 
8,000 volunteers. Um, we have around 1,600 people in the Slack channel of remote mappers. So building, building and sustaining the online community of remote mappers, I would say, is relatively easy. It's much, much harder to sustain the um, field mappers on the ground. Um, so <coughs> we've been working very closely with um, hot uh, in Tanzania and um, externally. Uh, we've, we, um, our operation was completely transformed when we got a hot micro grant um, around a year ago. So, uh, prior to that, we were just relying on volunteers with using their own phones, um, which was very skewed towards men because in the villages, smartphones are, are um, fairly rare anyway, and they're generally controlled by men. So having that, the grant made um, a big difference. We've since, it also allowed us to run training in various different, various different areas of rural Tanzania to tra train up people um, who are adding local details using maps.me mostly, and also field papers to an extent. Um, so our, our biggest challenge really now is um, having small amounts of funding to, car to carry on field mapping. Generally, so we're working with very uh, marginalized groups like subsistence farmers. Um, and although we never, we've never paid per diems, um, people do need some local transport costs to, to actually travel around and map. So um, how, we've, how we try to work is by linking as much as possible with other organizations that are working uh, in Tanzania. So for so try and engage people like uh, Voluntary Service Overseas, Peace Corps, uh, Tanzania Red Cross, uh, local government, um, etc. Um, and also other NGOs such as, um, so we're, We've been particularly focused on the, the fight against FGM, so we've engaged a lot of um, FGM, female genital mutilation activists, but also um, other large organizations such as Plan International Save the Children to try and, and persuade their volunteers in the field to, to get involved. So uh, we, I would say that we're entirely a volunteerism um, project. Uh, so, yeah. Great. And I'll just ask one follow-up question. So um, what would you say are sort of the differences between engaging these different groups? So you said you work with human rights groups versus um, any other kinds of groups that you tend to work with. And does everybody that you're engaging tend to have a job of some sort already? Um, yes, I mean, I guess the idea is to convince um, groups that that mapping um, helps whatever they're trying to do. So the major, the so we have um, local mapping groups, and they generally they're run by a, a community activist who is sees the benefit of maps for their community and that could be in protecting girls from FGM but it could be in convincing uh, donors that their the secondary school needs a hostel because uh, girls have extremely long walks to school um, or it could be that they need better access to water so all of those are problems that need a map as the first stage so uh, we try to engage um, people to get involved because they can see a direct benefit for, for them and their community. Great. Okay, let's move on to Geoffrey. Yeah, thank you. Um, so my name is Geoffrey uh, Katerega uh, from Uganda. I work with the humanitarian open map team on a project in Uganda, Mapping for Refugees. But I'm also uh, the chairman of Map Uganda, which is uh, a local uh, NGO of OpenStreetMap. So uh, we've been building that for uh, some good time now. Um, just want to quickly share with you uh, like my uh, OSM story. Uh, like how did I get involved? So I got involved in OpenStreetMap in around uh, uh, 2012. 
So um, that's when I was at university, and uh, there was a poster uh, called Map Mapping Challenge. So I was uh, um, intrigued and wanted to participate. So I participated in the challenge. Um, so there was an organization, an NGO in Kampala, called Fruits of Thought, um, which uh, I can say started off the OSM community in Uganda. And when I participated in this challenge, and I was one of the winners, so we um, had a project called Mapping Day, uh, which involved moving around the uh, country uh, on a bus, like making stops, and training university students um, on how to uh, edit OpenStreetMap and like, creating like uh, mapping groups at different universities. And then after that, uh, we continued like, having uh, uh, mapping parties and mapathons in Kampala. Um, and then that's when I got to uh, learn about uh, HOT, uh, which also made uh, me more interested because I realized then I can contribute um, to OpenStreetMap as a way of uh, helping out other people in need. Um, then uh, the different projects uh, that uh, started off like in Tanzania, Raman, Korea, I got to work on that, and then uh, more mapping projects that are happening in in Kampala. So on the way, um, after uh, like uh, you know uh, engaging with several mappers in the country, we felt we felt that there was a need to uh, you know create a, a local organization to um, to try to structure our activities and to grow the community, and that's when we um, registered uh, Map Uganda as an organization. Um, we are like in our second year now, and I can say we, um, we have been able to, you know, uh, do a few projects, uh, two of them now, um, one World Bank project, another one uh, called uh, Clean Streets. Um, um, and uh, I, I can say um, one of the, uh, I can say the challenges is um, we have people that get introduced to OpenStreetMap in different ways in the community. So some people get uh, to know about OpenStreetMap, like at a mapathon, uh, when they see a uh, poster someone come to contribute. Others, um, when you're going to do a project in a certain area and then you try to uh, recruit people. So um, like the people's view of, of OpenStreetMap, like, um, like what keeps them uh, to continue mapping. So someone who has been paid to contribute on a project and someone who came to volunteer uh, their time. So it's interesting to see uh, who of the two continues to map and why, why do they continue to map. Um, so it's quite very important to, um, when introducing to people to open to map to uh, tell them this is a volunteer uh, opportunity and they can like take this on and try to uh, start off it off like in their own communities and uh, uh, grow the map. So. Um, that's uh, a little bit about uh, up Uganda. Great. Let's just continue down the line. No, go. Um. Um, hi, all. I'm uh, Tasauf, also known as Ribbon. Um, I'm from Bangladesh. Uh, I have been working with uh, OpenStreetMap. Uh, for a while now, uh, working with the community, uh, trying to coordinate the community, uh, help coordinate the community, I would rather say. Uh, I have uh, joined uh, OSM. Uh, initially, I, I was supposed to uh, be a translator with, uh, with the Missing Maps project, where uh, Yureke and Pete was there in Bangladesh. Uh, but afterwards, when I went to the training session, I found out I would be rather be a mapper rather than a uh, translator over there. <laughs> uh, it was interesting uh, uh, for the uh, beginning. <laughs> and after, after, afterwards, um, what uh, I saw over there that uh, there has been a lot of volunteer students and other uh, people are engaged in it. I found it interesting and uh, uh, started working with it. Uh, soon uh, become very much close with the community and uh, somehow uh, been in the uh, in a position where uh, I I am uh, more or less uh, contributing uh, to the community as more of a uh, coordinating the volunteers and staffs uh, have been with uh, 
most of the projects out there in Bangladesh afterwards. Uh, but uh, one thing I just found out that uh, the main challenge, as uh, everyone was mentioning, main challenge was to sustain the volunteers out there because uh, um, most of the cases in our part of the country, uh, volunteers uh, in open, not only in open street map, in every uh, sector, volunteers are coming from the uh, educational uh, uh, institutes. Mo most of them are students, uh, and some are there who who are being in uh, other uh, workings and work and other things to do. Uh, but as I mentioned that almost 80% of the volunteers are coming from the student level. It is hard for them uh, to continue uh, afterwards. Uh, we have a vibe. Uh, I, uh, most of the cases people are saying in Bangladesh, uh, uh, OpenStreetMap community is the most vibrant, one of the most vibrant communities in the world, in the globally. Uh, if, if you go through the uh, statistics, you will see uh, uh, in the top list you will find uh, almost uh, 18 to 20 uh, volunteers who has been contributing a lot uh, in a way. But the total uh, main situation over there to sustain them uh, in, in that field is very much hard because most of them are not from geographical uh, uh, geographic background. Uh, some uh, I would say one or two percent of the people are coming from the geographic background over there. Others we, uh, are coming from the diverse background, from business backgrounds, from uh, engineering backgrounds, and other backgrounds. So uh, after finishing this, uh, their uh, educational life, their main focus is their career, how their career path is going on, and uh, how to uh, have this uh, capacity uh, helping them out with their future career too. So as their, uh, their main focus remains as the careers, uh, most of the cases uh, after one or two months doing, uh, going with OpenStreetMap, uh, they have their passion, but at the end of the day, uh, practical things comes first. They, they just uh, don't find any relation to their tra career track with the mapping things. So. Uh, what we have seen in most of the cases, uh, while there is projects uh, with the aid agencies and uh, other organizations, uh, there are volunteers available. But whenever projects are not there, we, we found out that uh, people are not uh, continuing uh, mapping. Uh, so we we tried to change these things. Uh, that is uh, became the more uh, more challenging for us to uh, have people constantly uh, keep this consistency uh, of uh, working with OpenStreetMap, contributing, and also uh, thinking about uh, thinking a bit innovatively how uh, OSM can be implemented uh, with the application. Uh, application uh, part, I would rather say. Uh, and uh, another thing, uh, uh, whoever working uh, with uh, OpenStreetMap in Bangladesh, uh, uh, you might have, uh, many of you might have known uh, Asan al -Hawk from World Bank. He has been working uh, uh, since the very beginning, but uh, most of the cases, uh, he, uh, what his experience was, he was saying that he has uh, trained more than 4,000 volunteers out there, and all of a sudden, whenever a new projects coming in, he, he couldn't find a single volunteer who will be jumping in to uh, volunteer with the projects. And a fresh batch of volunteers needed to be uh, trained up and uh, work with those things. So leadership is not coming out. In a, in a sense, because uh, if, if every time you have you need to rely on the fresh volunteers out there uh, to work on, uh, you have to uh, go through the basic things. Not uh, in technical uh, perspective, it is not improving that much. But uh, now the uh, situation is a bit changed as uh, humanitarian open street map team hot uh, has been uh, uh, brilliantly helping us out with. Uh, some device grants and uh, other things, uh, missing maps constantly uh, helping us out with the uh, thoughts and uh, some sort of training, uh, it would say online trainings and other things. Uh, 
another uh, thing comes up uh, that is uh, the main challenge uh, i say uh, the transition from i to we uh, most of the people are more uh, focused on their personal interests rather than overall uh, community based interest over there uh, so we are trying to find out a way to uh, more uh, community focused uh, coordination part rather than uh, individual consultants coming up with the projects and uh, people are involving in it because uh, if we want to sustain the uh, uh, platform over there uh, there need to be some applications over there coming from the community and uh, also some uh, ideas coming from the community who are thinking uh, ab about building up something based on OSM, OpenStreetMap. So uh, that's the part we are working on right now. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to Laura first. How about? Um, and Laura, can, you can introduce yourself as well in a similar way, and then we'll go to chat. Uh, okay, uh, I'm Laura Mugeha. Uh, I'm a student in Nairobi, Kenya, and I'm pursuing a degree in uh, geometrics engineering and GIS. So, how I'm involved with OpenStreetMap, I'm the pioneer youth mappers lead for uh, youth mappers chapter in the university. So, uh, on my side, I'm passionate about basically tech, OSM and open data and how we can integrate all of this to provide solutions to real world problems in the third world countries. So basically what we've done is we've been able to work on a couple of projects around Kenya, especially the USAID projects, uh, uh, PEPFAR projects in Nyanza uh, that concentrate on women and HIV and AIDS and such. So uh, I would say I, I when when I think of the issue of sustainability in the youth mappers chapter context, I tend to lean on thinking about impact and growth. So, uh, so we tend to see on how many students in the university are aware on about open data, free and open source software, and all that, and how they can actually use this to provide solutions to problems that are, they're facing on a community level. So to do this, what we do is mainly work with organizations. So say both locally and, and on a global level. So maybe if they have a project within the country or within the community, we are able to help them with them, then they're supposed to say, uh, provide funding to just for the training sessions and all that. So. I'd say that should be the main challenge that we've been facing, just finding the organizations that are willing to partner with us and all that. But through with good planning and all that, we, we were able to access funding and support from various organizations and all that, yeah. So currently what we're working on is, uh, for our Youth Mappers chapter, uh, we're working on Pro, we are creating a, a road management system for Kenya. So, because mainly, uh, if you've come in Kenya, you'd notice that some of the roads are in a very bad state. And what the government says is uh, they cannot provide funding to collect data on the road defects and then need funding again to do the maintenance. So, it's done in a, a haphazard way. So. So what you're doing is you're trying to see how we can use participatory mapping using social media and all that and collecting geodata from Twitter and just put it, pulling in so, so many data sources that are open and all that, yeah. Laura, maybe I can just ask one follow-up question. I know that you said you started out with uh, the Youth Mappers chapter and um, what about the sustainability of like a chapter, like a university chapter such as Youth Mappers in your particular university? Okay, so as I had said earlier, for, for us, uh, since we are working on other projects, what we just need is, say, access to funding to be able to, say, find a venue to 
held mapathons, do training sessions and all that, and that can be a bit tough considering uh, there's not so much support from the university itself and all that. So you have to look for a venue, you have to get access to internet, you have to convince people to to attend this. And also, I don't know if it's this is all around the world, but mostly right now in universities in Kenya, mostly people are looking for opportunities that will bring in finances or money and that. So, uh, you have to try and convince someone that this data, they'll be able to use it in another context and it's freely available. It may not necessarily bring the person individually, say, money or something of the sort, but it can be used directly or indirectly in another context to generate finances and sustain a whole community through, say, the provision of jobs and all that. So. I'd say that's also an issue within the chapter itself, just trying to convince people to participate in this and just trying to explain to them like the impact of open data and all that, yeah. Thanks. Okay, last uh, but not least. Hi everyone, I'm Chad Blevins. Uh, I work at USAID and also a co-founder of the Youth Mappers program. Um, <clears throat> which uh, I, I work on with Patricia Solis here. Um, I would say one of the, the biggest challenges that we face, so, so part of my job at USAID is to find places where USAID's working that could benefit from geographic data. That's what we do at the Geo Center. Um, and then, you know, I engage with the OSM community to create that data and then help the USAID partners um, use that data to help inform decisions. So there's plenty of need there to, to take on that work, but where, um, where what we're running up against is resources to help manage this rapidly growing network of youth mappers chapters. You know, this started as a concept a couple years ago, um, sort of as a little a pilot project. It's taken off in a big way. Uh, it's, it's, you know, exceeded our expectations. Um, but, you know, how do you continue to engage a network of 120 universities in 36 countries uh, when you didn't plan for that from the beginning? Um, we also run into some of the same challenges with training students, as you mentioned, in Bangladesh. Uh, you know, since we are working with university students, you know, they come and they go. So sustaining chapters, we, we rely on the students and their mentoring professors to continue keeping these chapters going. Um, but there's a lot of, you know, mapathons where you're giving a basic level training. But then how do we get those few students who are really into OpenStreetMap and take them to the next level, uh, you know, get them validating some of the map data, get them out in the field collecting some of those points of interest and other detailed information that helps enrich the quality of the map. Um, so, so training has been, it's just consistent work and the larger the network grows, the more basic level training you have to do. And we have come up with some ways to get students beyond that basic level um, <clears throat> and then get them to where they can, you know, tr take the train the trainers approach. Um, to help expand that knowledge within the community. But that is probably one of the biggest challenges. Also, right, we all know working in, in remote parts of the world, uh, when you're working on some of these projects, you have to coordinate amongst many different groups. So it's not com uncommon to work with, you know, say, youth mapper students, uh, a startup company, um, the local OSM community and maybe an NGO, right, along with USAID. So coordinating all those pieces of the pu puzzle and making sure everyone has what they need um, and clear direction to move forward. Thank you. So many interesting themes have come up. Um, I just wanted to call out a couple and then maybe some of you have a response to each other from what you've heard because I think it's interesting. I don't know if you've all sort of sat and talked together about this with each other before and probably other people in this room also doing similar things in the country they're from. Um, the role of students 
So it sounds like students have come up in four, with four of these um, discussions so far, and I don't know if Janet also works with students. I work with students a little bit um, through Youth Mappers as well, although we started with non-students kind of looking for people who were really needing skills and couldn't go to university. Um, but what should that be? Because as Chad mentioned, students come and go. Some of you are probably students and you can get very involved in something when you're in university of the time and the dedicated kind of the, the whole point of being there is to get involved in stuff. Um, and then it, afterward, how can you sustain that involvement in such a way that benefits the whole OSM, basically just keeps the map going. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to speak to that in particular. Um, so um, I'll just try to share from our experience in Uganda. So, um, you know, with the youth mappers chapters especially, uh, someone is at university and like he's the president of the youth mappers chapter and then he's out of university. Um, it's, it's very key uh, to get that person um, involved in the local OSM community um, and if, if that person is in a country where there is no um, like organized uh, OSM group, uh, then it's, it's very hard for them. And what we are trying to do uh, is to grow um, OSM Africa, um, which is a network of uh, local OSM community from all around Africa to try to uh, share uh, knowledge and experiences um, and like learn from each other. Uh, so what we are trying to do is also to try to uh, help countries which don't have organized local OSM communities to start up something because um, like they mentioned when, when someone has been participating in a youth member chapter and uh, he's out of university but wants to continue so where do they go so they can now uh, join um, efforts as a, a local OSM community so we need to have uh, like more uh, local chapters um, of, of local OSM groups from uh, different countries in Africa because uh, that's still low, uh, but this is something that can help uh, sustain uh, people who are interested in continuing the open street map. Thanks. Can I just add um, that youth mappers have been key to our development as well. Um, so we set up um, youth mapper chapters at the Institute of Rural Development Planning. Um, so and those people, when they qualify, will go back to villages to be uh, village, village executive officers, etc. So um, hopefully that will be, really be the um, integral in spreading the movement. Um, one of the key challenges that we have also is that we're working in rural areas that have additional challenges. So, I mean, students are a relatively privileged group in that obviously they're educated and, and have access to education and so on. So, uh, but I agree that they are a key um, driver in helping to build the community. Um, I just, I'll move on to another topic to pull out. Um, so kind of linked to that, Jeffrey was mentioning OSM Africa. I guess I, you know, we're here in Italy. There's people from OSM networks throughout the entire world here. And I've been super impressed meeting people from everywhere in the world here. Um, I guess I would like to hear some of your thoughts on what the role for the international uh, OSM world and the people that are here in this room, people that are here at this conference, and sort of mappers that are not from your countries should be, or how you think, you know, kind of like, how you think it should look globally. I don't know if uh, somebody has a comment on that. I would rather um, say, like, uh, building up local communities, local foundations, uh, as OSM Africa, uh, uh, Jeffrey was mentioning about, we're also uh, uh, just uh, uh, developing uh, another uh, uh, coordination group over there in Bangladesh, OSM Bangladesh Foundation, we're calling it right now. But at the end of the day, uh, what happens with uh, most of the cases, uh, even uh, 
there are a lot of NG, uh, NGOs, aid agencies, and other organizations are working in, uh, with OSM uh, projects within the countries, in different countries. Uh, what we found out that uh, for the specific projects, they are open to support with everything. But at the end of the project, uh, what happens? If we want to, uh, as uh, Laura was mentioning about, uh, if uh, local communities want to uh, uh, organize a mapathon, where should they go? Question comes up, we need a venue over there. Venue is hard to find with uh, internet accessibility and other things, keeping, in, keeping those things in mind. It is always hard to find in those part of the world. Uh, in those cases, aid agencies could have helped out with the uh, infrastructures they have, but uh, it, it is a bit, uh, uh, I'm very much sorry to say, most of the cases, uh, agencies are not helping the communities out, out of their projects. In, if it is not being, uh, uh, if, uh, Organizations who are working with OSM in the, in the international arenas and in the national uh, levels, uh, benefiting with the projects and uh, stuffs, are not helping out the communities. Uh, just having one or two mapathons in, a, uh, in a, for the uh, project needs doesn't uh, ensure any sort of uh, sustainability or. Uh, it is not helping out uh, the overall OSM platform in a big way, I, I would rather say, in terms of community perspective, what peop people in my community think of. Uh, the other uh, mappers are there. They are, they are not getting the opportunity to work with uh, using those infrastructures later on. If they have uh, the enthusiasm to uh, work as volunteer to, they are not finding it out. Uh, I think it, it is, uh, it is uh, one thing we should focus more on, uh, how to uh, have not only aid agencies, other uh, corporations, uh, other organizations. It can be uh, a commercial organization, it can be government organizations, can help, help out in a big way. There are uh, uh, many infrastructures uh, being developed for the government level to government level ICT uh, 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 halls are there, auditoriums are there. It can be used or uh, if the uh, aid agencies or the other agencies have their hall rooms uh, allocated for the community for a specific uh, time frame that uh, they can use it up and partnering uh, with the communities in a way. It, it might help uh, the local communities uh, grow up in a bigger way and we, uh, the guys who are working in the communities, they will feel interested uh, to work more on those things up because uh, as I mentioned, all, most of the guys over there are students uh, and they focus on their career too. It is intriguing for them uh, to, to be able to uh, go uh, with a specific organization and uh, work within a uh, certain, uh, I would say, infrastructures over there. It is uh, some, something they feel pride of also. They feel proud to be part of that organization. He, he or she might be working uh, with that organization. Feels like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they, they take it as their uh, pride thing and uh, we saw whenever uh, any organization is organizing something, uh, they are uh, coming in a big way. But if a uh, community is calling them out that uh, we're going to have a mapathon or something like that, uh, we don't see that much people coming out over there uh, to mm -hmm. uh, participate in a way. But uh, even with the youth member chapters, I would say, uh, it is hard for the students to uh, organize a mapathon straight away if, if they uh, call it out. Mm -hmm. They don't uh, see that much uh, people appearing in the... Uh, Janet, you want to add something to this? 
Um, I think there's three ways that the OSM international community can, can help. Um, firstly, on, like, on an individual level, um, OSM mappers can help map those places that are not map not mapped um, and help so help local communities. Um, we're also trying to partner individual mappers um, in places like this um, who are linked with community groups in Tanzania who are helping create say um, printable maps in QGIS for example and liaising via email. Um, secondly, you know, obviously it's, you know, it's nice to see a relatively diverse um, crowd here from 56 countries, but um, still, you know, places like Africa are very still underrepresented. Represented, and, um, and I think it's fantastic that there are scholarships available, but, you know, that could be expanded. And then I think thirdly, um, Mappers who are more experienced, um, mapping places that are very well mapped, should be mindful that um, some people are very coming very new to OSM and they're mapping their communities that are starting from a very low base. So you know all, they're almost starting with a, a map of nothing, and so it's a very different context. And I know as a when I was a new mapper not that long ago, you know, it's really important that the f your first feedback from the community is positive. Um, so my experience has always been very positive within the, the, the mapping community. Um, I have to say it's been different from in other technical communities when if your first edit, say in Wikipedia for example, is uh, you get negative feedback, then you think, well, I'm, I'm not going to do that again. Um, so be tolerant of initial mistakes and give positive feedback. Interesting. I'd like to see if we have some audience questions or comments at this point. I don't know if there's a couple microphones here. Otherwise, yeah, please feel free to chime in on any of the topics you've heard. There's one here, there's one here. Hi. Given that um, we all recognize the issue of a new project being something that's really exciting and it's something that you might get a lot of people that are interested in doing something and we all understand that human condition that something new is more fun and to sustain something and just fix something is not as exciting. How can um, OSMF and people that are working out in the fields devise their local programs such that there is always something new and exciting? And it's also the problem for funders. So, um, you know, Chad was sort of saying, you know, about, you know, trying to sustain even the youth mappers issues. How can, my experience is, is that funders always look to fund new innovative um, projects. They don't like to go down the route of sustainability because that's never ending and it's not something that necessarily looks great in their grant reports or you know, to their, the people that give them money. So it's a case of, if that is the landscape that we're working in, is it a case that we have to think about new ways of devising our own programs so that there is always something new and interesting? Even if it's, and, and you know, when it gets to the stage of, I don't know, like bug fixing or, or saying that, that you, you, you have like sprints and you incentivize um, some areas that you know are not as attractive. Yeah, I'd just be interested to, yeah. Get Actually, feedback. I'd be happy to speak to that a little bit. Just, I mean, I've, I've been in the position of looking for funding a lot um, and trying to sort of sell what might look like it's the same thing. I mean, some people would say, well, you're still working on mapping in Kibera. Why isn't it done yet? And, uh, you know, but those of us working on things in place like that know that there's like constantly a need for updated, refreshed, or deeper, or more sectoral based, or just just 
there's always something new, but to sell it as new to funders. And I mean, OpenStreetMap didn't arise out of the international development and aid sector. Like that's not its origin. So I'm kind of trying to think in a bit separate from that, even though that's my training as well. Um, and so I think you bring up a very good point when a lot of people, we've had some other discussions where I talk about like the origin of the OpenStreetMap community in each country. How did it come to be? Um, it has an influence on its sustainability down the road. So if it, it, if it started with a lot of um, development money put into like a, a big project, that's what, it, that's what people think that OpenStreetMap is maybe. And it's hard to change the perception down the road. So there is maybe a more intentional way um, with some of the younger communities to think about that. Because even if you got, you know, if there was a lot of funding to fund mappers and trainings and stuff, and then suddenly it's gone because, yeah, the, the project ends and um, the aid sector is very finicky and fickle. Um, so that's, I think, the point where a lot of us sitting here are already at is like, okay, wait, that's not going to... You can't just, we can't rely on this kind of thing forever. And so I know there's some um, efforts to engage more with private sector, um, which is one thing that uh, I think Ribbon is going to talk about in another session. Um, and I'm also thinking, and that's kind of why I raised this question of, you know, what are there ways to partner more with the broader OSM world, which is a lot of people and a lot of people in. Europe and the US who want to see the map grow, not only in their own country, but for everyone. So there's also maybe an internal um, possibility for support. And it might not be at that level where you're talking, you know, good salaries for a lot of people in uh, a bunch of countries. But in, as Janet was saying, very small amounts can be helpful too. Um, but it's just a matter of actually maybe being able to plan ahead and not, you know, <laughs> like knowing that there's a relationship with some kind of um, either donor or actual enterprise, private enterprise. Um, maybe we have five more minutes. So how about somebody else wants to say something on that and then we have another comment question. Looks like a few people have a <laughs> are gunning. Yeah, I can, I can say something real quick to that. On, um, you know, putting on the USA lens, but also thinking more holistically on um, sustainability of the project. I think the more, the, the diversity of map users you have is really gonna help. And from, you know, the USAID humanitarian sector, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, promote the use within some of the implementing partners and other people working in that space who may not have heard of OpenStreetMap before, but once they do, and once they see the value in it, um, and, and using geographic data in the map, um, then they're going to be willing to invest more resources into maintaining the map. And the more users that you have and the more wider diversity of users you have, I think this, uh, it's going to overall increase the quality of data out there. Um, the way uh, I was mentioning about the things, uh, what we were missing, uh, right now in Bangladesh we are, we are trying to build up uh, some sort of uh, mechanism over there. As I was mentioning, uh, we are trying to be more coordinated, uh, have some coordinated approach to build up the community out there. As we found out that most of the cases, uh, the projects are not there. That's why uh, people are not uh, being interested. And the lack of projects coming out from uh, the community, uh, the open street, local open street map community is causing uh, one of the uh, bigger uh, impact of a lack of people uh, being engaged with the uh, with the uh, platform in a way we we are focusing on uh, more on uh, having uh, the local uh, building up local partnership with uh, the government level uh, also with the uh, local entrepreneurs uh, we, with the startups uh, whoever uses maps uh, we are trying to engage them into it uh, and, it, and at the same time, we, we are uh, building up some innovative uh, ideas, like uh, we have built up, uh, developed a group of people who are uh, working with the innovation, uh, data-driven innovation, I would rather say, that is based on OSM, we are calling it Bangladesh Open Innovation Lab, Boyle. Uh, who are constantly uh, working with developing new ideas, platforms, and applications uh, that can be integrated uh, with 
uh, OpenStreetMap data over there. Uh, and at the same time, we have a uh, very, uh, very much highly expected uh, um, projects. Uh, we are continuing as a community over there to uh, map up the at least the base layer of the uh, map of uh, countrywide. And what happens? Uh, it is in triggering the. Uh, uh, community people who, who are being trained earlier but not uh, being engaged in the process. Right now, there's, uh, all of a sudden, they're seeing that a lot of areas are being uh, mapped over there uh, around their neighborhood. They're now uh, coming up, uh, I, would, I would say, uh, voluntarily uh, coming up with uh, and talking to us that uh, they want to be a part of the project. Uh, Though they don't know that uh, those projects are not being uh, having any any sort of uh, financial backings and uh, other stuffs, uh, as their previous uh, experience was there, if there is something going on, uh, they have projects out there. There might be some financing over there. It, it, it is some sort of uh, uh, some sort of I, I would say uh, triggering them up to engage more on it. Uh, recently, you might have seen uh, a lot of things going on in uh, OpenStreetMap in Bangladesh. I will be talking uh, about those things afterwards uh, also. Okay, I'm just going to run over by like one minute by, and allow him to make a comment in the back, please, or question. Yeah, um, I was going to ask, or, uh, ask for a reflection on a, a longer term, maybe a bit of a longer term uh, sustainability of the communities. <clears throat> In Mozambique, we, we get a lot of campaigns from, from the donors uh, uh, for civic actions, about, uh, to train people in civic actions, simple things like uh, maybe waste, uh, se separating waste or cleaning the front, the front door, st stuff like that. And so when we started mapping, we thought this would, mapping should all, also be part of the daily things you do as part of your uh, society, as your responsibility towards society. You don't only clean the, the, the front yard, you, you, you separate the waste, the litter before throwing it in the trash can. And you also map your home and your street and stuff like that. So that was a bit of our vision uh, when starting to map. And it, uh, the reality a year or two years into the endeavor is being, it, it has been slower than we expected in the beginning. We thought it would be, oh, just, let's just let's just show everybody open street map and everybody will start putting their their homes on open street map and stuff like that so uh, is this is this something that the communities can strive towards like to to train as much people as possible and eventually hope that they are sustainable just by the fact that everybody knows how to map we can we have various examples facebook is very sustainable and nobody needs to be trained to be on facebook it's it's automatic so maybe that would also be a, on the list of sustainability strategies. Maybe we mm -hmm. should consider also like try, trying to train as much people and try to see if it can become a civic act, uh, something you do towards, as, as part of your responsibility towards society. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any reflection on that. Well, we, we kind of have to wrap up because I have probably someone else coming in the room, but I think that's a great point also to kind of close with is, you know, getting making people think about, okay, well, there's, there's me, there's my career, there's also the we. So somebody mentioned, I think, Jeffrey, about changing, or maybe was, one of you mentioned the I to the we idea. And that's, I think that's kind of what a lot of us in this conference have already achieved for ourselves, is like we think about it as a we. Um, how can we kind of bring in that thinking, or at least you know, start from, start from that place when we introduce OSM in different places or if, we're, uh, if we have that ability to reach out to different communities. Um, there's so much more to talk about on this topic, but unfortunately we're out of time. Uh, I would love to continue talking, so I don't know, I'm probably going to try to create some kind of way that people can communicate beyond this particular panel, so if you want to raise your hand or, well, don't raise it now, but come up to me. <laughs> <laughs> join the, the discussion um, across all of all of this community. Thank you.